like to talk a little bit about our neighboring country, Canada. Why Canada? Because aside from the many similarities that we share, such as celebrating our Independence Day on the very same weekend, and our groundbreaking agreement to ban all above ground testing of the Kardashian reproductive system, I've also been offered Canadian citizenship for 24 hours. Possibly less, depending on how I pronounce the word poutine, which from what I understand is a French word meaning clogged artery. However, if all goes well, I'll get to spend an entire day as a Canadian, eating nothing but Tim Hortons donuts, chewing purple gum that tastes like soap, and stretching my Molson muscle. Undoubtedly, there are those of you who are probably surprised, maybe even outraged, by my willingness to become a Canadian citizen. But rest assured that this decision came after many hours of soul-searching, and the realization that with my free Canadian health coverage, and access to a high-performance vehicle, I could potentially see more specialists in 24 hours than I have seen in the last 15 years on my HMO. You may be wondering how the offer of us 24-hour citizenship in Canada came about. As much as I'd like to say it has to do with the impact my writing has had on the Canadian people, the truth is, it really has more to do with spoken word poet and Community Arts Council of Vancouver Executive Director Chris Gilpin, who offered me the citizenship in exchange for a monthly supply of Kraft macaroni and cheese from the U.S. That's because by not being subject to Canada's goods and services tax, Chris will save an estimated $3,000 a year. At least in U.S. dollars. I'm not sure what that equals in Canadian currency because, as we all know, their money is measured in, in millimeters, kilograms, or some form of metric denomination meant to confuse us American tourists, like the ones who get ticketed for driving 100 miles an hour through downtown Vancouver every year. I should point out that free medical coverage isn't the only reason I'd like to become a Canadian citizen for a day. There's also the incredible attractions. <laughs> like the giant Ukrainian Easter egg of Vegreville, Alberta, that stands an amazing nine meters tall. According to my calculations, if that were an actual egg, it would have to be laid by a chicken roughly the size of Rob Ford. <laughs> or in US standard measurements, roughly one in five people leaving McDonald's. As you can see, I'm excited about my 24-hour Canadian citizenship. I plan to make the most of it by starting in Vancouver and then making my way through Rumby and Vegreville. Of course, that's assuming I don't get arrested for speeding, or worse, hospitalized by a non-French-speaking woman for striking up a conversation about her poutine, which actually I found out is pronounced Putin. Still sounds inappropriate. But hey, at least I'll have medical coverage. I'd like to end with a tribute to the Canadian people, the Community Arts Council of Vancouver, and its executive director and master poet, Chris Gilpin. And I'd like to do this in the form of a haiku.